Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski. I'm part of our Learning Center team. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our topic for today is basic custom reporting. So we're going to look at uh, some of the different ways that you can customize reports within your My Geotab database. Uh, we're joined by Cindy Gonzalez from Product Support, who's going to be presenting, and I'll pass it over to her. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us today, and take it away. All right. So what we're going to be covering today is what are custom reports and why are they needed. We're also going to be reviewing some custom report examples, uh, the basics of custom reports uh, from the database, which is going to be exporting the templates, modifying them, and then importing them back into the database so that we can retrieve live data. We're going to modify three of our most popular reports, one of them being our TRIPS history report, our IFTA reports, we're going to go into some pivot tables to make the IFTA report look really awesome and also an exceptions report and we are going to include bar graphs to display the information a lot cleaner. Um, and then just to close it out, we're also going to be adding a company logo to one of the reports. Um, this is a really great way for you to customize and make your reports look very unique. All right, so what are custom reports and why are they needed? Uh, custom reports, they summarize any data within our GeoTab databases, um, and we format them into either an Excel document or a PDF. Um, now, it does allow your company to tailor any of the data according to your needs. You are also able to hide any data that is unnecessary, um, and then just display whatever you want to see. So why are custom reports needed? Uh, these reports do provide admins the ability to make company-wide decisions based on the data that is presented. And it also provides quick snapshots of drivers' performance and possible areas of improvement. So this is a custom report example that I created. This is my personal vehicle. Not the best driver. I have a couple of speeding violations, um, some idling, some unauthorized device removals. And as you can see, this is something that is not in your database by default. So later on in the presentation, we're going to be going over how to make this um, look this way and also how to create a bar graph to display that data. Um, we can go a little bit further with this report and add a duration. So we can add a column and then align to it to display two different um, data sets. All right, so our next custom report that we have available, and this one is in the marketplace. Uh, this is a seatbelt report. This report gives you either the device name or your driver's name, as well as how many times a seatbelt violation was broken and the percentage of that. And it puts it into this really cool, awesome graph uh, to show you the count and that percentage. You may recognize some of these names. <laughs> I use mine and some of my coworkers. All right, our next report is our highest idling duration report. This is a really useful report as it does provide admins the ability to see where or what drivers are spending the most time just idling. Um, it gives you the percentage and it gives you a duration. So like I said, this one is available in the marketplace so you can go in there, download it, Reimport it. All right, so for the basics of custom reporting, what we do is we export our template, we retrieve the data from the database, we modify it, we make any desired changes. So we add formulas, we format the data, and we add the images that we need. Once we're done making those changes, we would then re import the edited version. And that template will then reflect every time you run the report. So our first step is going to be exporting our template. The way that we do this is by going to our administration tab, then click on reports, and then we click on report views. So if you're anything like me, I learn as I watch. So let me exit out of this presentation and let me go into the actual database itself. So in the database, you can find this template by going into administration, reports, and report views. Like I say, 
stated earlier, one of our most common reports is our TRIPS history report. So that's the one that we're gonna be going into first. Here in the report views tab, you're gonna see that there is a full list of different reports that are available. You're gonna find your custom reports all the way at the top. But if you have a brand new database, you probably don't have, have this option available. You can probably only see built-in reports. And it would look something like this, built-in reports. Now these are the reports that are provided by Geotab. And this one, these reports will give you uh, the template that we're gonna use for the TRIPS history report. Um, if you click into the TRIPS history report, which is gonna be, like I said, the first, number, the first one that we're gonna be editing, we will scroll down into the TRIPS history section. And here's the TRIPS detail. And here we can see that we have an advanced TRIPS detailed report. We're gonna be using, using this report by clicking the section here and clicking export at the top. Okay, by clicking export, you can see that we have the file that has downloaded here. Once we click on it, you can see that the Excel file is beginning to open. And here you're gonna be able to verify the information that, that is displayed within a TRIPS history report. If you have ran one of these before, um, it probably, probably doesn't look like this and it does have live data. But for the sake of editing just this TRIPS detailed report, we're gonna be using this skeleton. The skeleton does show only a template vehicle um, information and it doesn't have any names, it doesn't have any grouping. So everything is pretty much just a template. Any edits that you make to this template, once we re-import this into the database, the information will automatically uh, re-upload and it will, will show uh, with your company's information. So don't be afraid if you see this 2009 here, it will definitely be edited once we re-import it. Okay, um, so I do wanna go over two of the most requested uh, uh, edits that we have. So like I said, since I do work in the product support team, I get asked this maybe about five, six times a week. So hopefully this is a question that you have and this will help you as well. Um, one of the, the edit that I get asked about a lot is the driving duration and the stop duration. This report does show this information formatted only as hours and minutes. So we have customers who call in who think that if it says 20 here, it's 20 seconds. It's actually 20 minutes. So to remove that confusion, we can format this to show hours, minutes, and also seconds. Um, the way that we can do this is by selecting our column here. Because this is showing time and the stop duration is also showing time, we wanna edit both of these. So they can both have the same format. So once you click on the column, if you click Control on your keyboard, click on N, you can see that both of these columns are now highlighted. So any edits that we make to the number formatting is going to apply to both of these. Okay, so if you look all the way at the top of your Excel program, there's a section that says number here. If you click this dropdown, we can edit the number formatting on it. So we don't want it to just show hours and minutes, we want hours, minutes, seconds. In order to edit that, we need to click on the more number formats at the bottom. And now we're gonna get this awesome pop-up that gives us all of those additional options. If you click on custom at the bottom, which is what we need to make this work, we can find that we have the different formatting abilities here. What we need is hours, minutes, seconds. So we're gonna select this one, which is H for hours, minutes, and seconds. Then we click OK. If you want this formatted any other way, definitely feel free to play around with this a little bit and select different formats. But 
this is how I like it. So I'm gonna select this one and I'll click OK. And now you see that there is additional information added. So now we have hours, which is zero hours, 20 minutes, and eight seconds. Same goes for stop duration. So that's one of the really cool edits that you can make within Excel. And we have one more thing that we need to go over in this report, and that is how to add a formula. Okay, so another great question that I get that I get asked a lot is averages. So a lot of companies want to know how long does it take for, or how long have our drivers been driving this week? Um, and the way that we can do that is by adding an average formula. So you can click on any of the empty fields here at the top. And you can see that, is, that it is an empty field because there is nothing in the formula bar here at the top. So some of these do have formulas enabled, as you can see up here. So you definitely don't want to make any edits to these cells. But any cells that are empty, feel free to make any of the changes that you need. So just so we know what we're going to be adding on, we're going to type in average driving duration, okay? And now here in K3, we're gonna add our formula. So in order to find an average and to start a formula, we need to click the equal sign. We type in average because we want the average. We do an open parentheses and we click the first cell that we want to start calculating. So for this report, we want to start calculating from J10. So we click J10. And because we want to calculate the whole column, we're going to do a colon. And then we are going to do, we're going to select the last cell for that column that we want to calculate. So we want to calculate from J10 all the way down to J13. All right, so then we click enter, or close parentheses, and then click enter. And now we have the average driving duration. Again, this is only a template, so once you re-import this back into your database, you're going to see this number change because there is a formula in there. So if you input this information without a formula, it's never going to change. There needs to be a formula behind it. Just so we can see how this works, we're going to save it. To file, save. All right, now it's saved. Now we've modified it. So our last step into the for customizing a report is to re-import it. So if you go into your administration tab in your database, click reports, then you click on report views. There's an option at the top that says add Excel file. So we want to add this file. Where it says drop your files here or click to select them, we want to click that. And here we see the report that we just edited. So we want to click on that report. And we get this new reports edit page. So you can see this name is kind of long and doesn't make any sense. So feel free to edit that to whatever you'd like. Um, I'm going to just change this to custom trips, history, report, okay? Now that the file is loaded, we can set this as a dashboard view. We can set this up as an emailed report. For this report, we just want a report view. We want to turn this on. because so we want to be able to run this report whenever we'd like in that same format. We do have additional options here at the bottom. But I want to run this report by the device. If you have any driver set up, you can run this by driver or you can run this by route. But I'll just leave it defaulted to the device. And because this is not an exceptions report, I'm not going to turn on any exception rules. So now that this has been re-added, we're going to go ahead and save it. All right. Now here you're going to see this option where it says the custom reports. And that report that we just added should be 
available here. So we're gonna just scroll down. And here is the custom trips history report. Now be advised that there is this preview button at the bottom, which is where you're going, going to be able to run the live data. And that's the reason why we turned on this show report and drop down list. If this would be turned to turned to no or left as off, that preview button is not going to be available and it's going to be a little bit harder to run live data. What this does is it also enables a drop down option for you and we'll go over that in just a couple of minutes. So let's just go back to this report. Let me find it. And so let's click click the preview button. And here you're going to see the edit that we made. So if you remember correctly, it was defaulted to only show the hours and minutes. Now it's showing hours, minutes, seconds for both the driving duration and the stop duration. And the average driving duration did also change. So it was initially 43 minutes on the template, but now because there is live data, it is added on there, okay? Um, so, and then the dates also were edited. So it was 2009 in the template, and now it's running for today. Be advised that you can edit the date period that you want to run this report for. So you can run it for yesterday, this week, or anything custom. So if you need to run it for this month or for you know six months, you can run this here. You can apply the changes, and the information will re-upload, and it will refresh with this new format that you created. Now, um, earlier, before we went into this, I went over that show report and drop down list button. And I told you that that enabled the view button or the drop down button. So if you click view here, this custom trips report template or format is going to be available here. So anytime that you re upload a report, turn on that show report and drop down list this drop-down list is gonna give you that format. If you don't want this format, you can also go back and just do the advanced view, which is gonna give you the same information. It's just not gonna have it formatted the way that we formatted it just now, okay? All right, so now that we have the custom trips detailed report edited, what we're gonna go into next is going to be our if the report. This report is really useful uh, when you need to do anything tax related, uh, if you're running hours of service. So this report can be found under the activity tab and here under if the report. We're gonna run this report and we're gonna edit only live data for this one. So earlier today we worked with a skeleton Right now, we're gonna do the live data. We're gonna customize this date period. We're gonna run it for July up until today, so it's gonna include last month's information and this month. And we're gonna run it for all vehicles. We're gonna hit Apply Changes. Okay, now it's going to give us our vehicle. It's going to give us our jurisdiction. So it doesn't give us any addresses, but does give us the state, gives us driver, and all of this additional information. So what we're going to do is we are going to download this report by clicking this Excel file at the top, this button. As you can see, it's going to download it here. So we're going to click that. All right, so in the report itself, you can hide any data that you want by highlighting the columns. So our goal for this report is actually just to show jurisdiction and total mileage. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hide the driver because we don't want the driver. We're gonna highlight also the enter time, the exit time, the enter odometer, and the exit odometer. So you can just right click on these columns and click hide. So now we have a vehicle, we have the jurisdiction where they drove, 
and now we also have the distance. Okay, so any changes that you make into the report tab, um, you may want to reflect them in the pivot table. Most of our reports do have this summary tab at the bottom. If you click on summary, you're going to see that this, this is formatted into a pivot table. If for some reason the report doesn't have this summary tab, it's probably hidden. So you can right click on the report tab, click unhide, and any hidden data sheets are going to be here. So if the summary tab is not there, it should be here. Click summary, and then the hidden sheet should update for you. This one already has it, luckily. So we'll click summary. With the pivot tables, uh, there is one downside, and that is that you cannot edit the cell itself. If you try to click on the cell, it's not going to, you can't edit anything, you can't add anything. The only way to edit a pivot table is going to be through the pivot table fields that populate on the right hand side. So if they're not there, just make sure to click on the pivot table, and then the fields are going to show up here. Um, if you click on it and the pivot table fields do not show, um, you can enable them manually by clicking Analyze at the top and then clicking on the field list here. So again, you can turn them on or take them off, whatever you choose. But right for now, we're going to leave this as uh, displaying here. So in order to make any of the changes to this pivot table, we need to make the edits here. Um, to reflect the report tab, we're going to remove the enter time because we don't have enter time in the report tab anymore. We don't have exit time. We don't have enter odometer. And we also don't have exit odometer. Okay. So now that we have removed those pivot table fields on the right hand side, the information does look a lot cleaner. So now what this is displaying is the vehicle, the jurisdiction, and it's also showing the total mileage for that specific jurisdiction and that specific vehicle. So as you can see here, Brian's vehicle only drove in Nevada for the period of July 1st through August 8th for a total of 734 miles. Uh, but you can see Sage's vehicle drove in Nevada, drove in California. It'll give you the total per jurisdiction, and then it'll also give you a grand total for the whole fleet. So this is a really awesome way to format the information. Just make it look a lot cleaner um, for you to be able to either send this out to your drivers or your vendors or any customers that you also have. So we can re-import this format back into the database by clicking File, Save. I'm just going to go ahead and bring this down, close it out. Remember, importing is really easy. Just click Administration, Reports, Report Views. Click Add Excel File at the top. Drop your file here. The one that we were working on is the Fuel Tax Report. We'll click on that. Click Open. Again, make sure to edit that name. It's really long. Let's change that. Do Custom if the Wildcard Wednesday. All right. So you can remember, we can turn on the show report and drop down list. All right. We want this to be an option. We want this format. So we're going to click yes on that. Save here. Now, if you scroll down, you're going to see our custom if the Wildcard Wednesday here with that preview button enabled. Now, if you want to run this report, let's say you need to run it you know, once every six months and you want it in that specific format, we can go back into the activity tab, go back into the if the report here. Let's say we want to run it for from May 1st through August 8th for all of the vehicles. We'll click Apply Changes. Okay, now we have the information popu populating all the way back from May. But 
the format still doesn't show correct. The way that we're going to make sure that this is showing correct is by clicking the view button and selecting that new format that we just uploaded, which is called the custom if the wildcard Wednesday. So we'll click that there. So now as you can see, it's showing the vehicle, the jurisdiction, and the distance. Scroll down a little bit more. The pivot table will also update to only show vehicle, jurisdiction, and the total. So whatever changes you make into in the report file, once you re-upload it, turn on that show report and drop down menu. It's going to be an option available for you here at the top. From here, you can download it as a PDF or as an Excel file, whichever you choose, but it's a really great way to display that. All right, so the next report that we're going to be editing today is another really popular and valuable report, which is our exceptions report. So if you are familiar with the database, you'll know that with the exceptions report, you can run seat belt violations, you can run speeding violations, harsh cornering, anything that you need to uh, review, you can pull it up here in the exceptions as far as, far as rules go. Um, and that information can be found on your database under the rules and groups. If you click on exceptions, it's going to populate this page for you here. Here you can select what date period you want to see. So, it, so we're going to run it from, let's just do this week. Let's do this week here. We're going to select all of our vehicles in our fleet. And for the rules, you can either select all of the rules or you can select individual rules. For this example, I'm just going to be using the speeding and the hard acceleration. We're going to click Apply Changes. All right, so our goal for this report is to display this information in a bar graph. So when you run the exceptions report initially, it's going to give you this list view. As you can see here at the top, these buttons are going to be grayed out, so you cannot download the list, but you can download the report. And we're gonna do that by clicking the view button at the top, click details, then click advanced, which is my personal favorite, but you can click on the report view and it's gonna give you similar data. It's just formatted a little bit different. The advanced, the advanced view is just gonna give you an overall uh, view of everything that this report can offer. And that's why I like it, but it's up to you which one you choose. So we'll click advanced. And now that we see that this information has loaded, we can download it by clicking the Excel file at the top. All right, and we're gonna open it. All right, so as you can see, this, this is a lot of data. Again, you can customize this however you'd like. So if you need to hide any data here, absolutely feel free to do that. Uh, go ahead and just click on the cell or on the column that you need to edit and then just drag it across. Just highlight everything that you don't want to see in this report. Now just to reiterate, make sure to just hide the columns and not delete them. If you delete them, it can interfere with the additional formulas that this report already has. So just make sure to hide them. Okay, and let's say that we don't really care about the details of the exception, so we'll highlight O as well. We'll right-click it and then just click Hide. Okay. And now that we have the information that we need, which is the device, the group, the rule, where the rule is broken, uh, the start and end time of duration, we're going to go into our Summary tab, which is our pivot table. And this is where we're, we are going to start the editing of not only the pivot table, but also moving the data so that it can reflect properly in a graph. So again, we'll click on the pivot table so that we can populate the pivot table fields all the way on the right-hand side. And just remember that whatever information you want your pivot chart to display will be the only information that will be on this pivot table. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So 
So we'll leave the device because we want to know what device broke the rule. We'll remove the first name. We'll remove the last name. We'll remove the driver. We'll leave the rule because we want to know what rule was broken. Okay. We'll leave the duration because we want to know how long this rule was broken for. We'll remove the distance and we'll remove the details. Okay. So now we know that Brian's vehicle broke the speeding rule for a total of three minutes. Same goes for all of the other vehicles here. Um, Ishii's vehicle broke the speeding and the hard acceleration rule and you'll see that on here as well. It'll give you a grand total. So this is really awesome. All right, so let's say we want to know how many times this rule was broken. We can also do that by selecting the rule field all the way on the right hand side and duplicating this to show as a value. So we can click this, hold down your mouse, drag it all the way to the bottom, values, and automatically, this report will set this as a count of the rule. So now it shows you the device, the rule, how long this rule was broken for, and how many times this rule was broken. If for some reason when you drag this down, it doesn't automatically default to count of rule, let's say for some reason it defaults to sum or product of rule, you can click this drop down button here then click value field settings and you can select how you want this information calculated. Like I said, for this report, we want to count. We want to know how many times. So we'll leave it as count and we'll enter OK. So now that the information is displaying a lot cleaner, we can insert our bar graph here. We can do that by clicking in the insert section at the top here, you're going to see an additional option that says charts. Okay, I always run to the recommended charts, but you're more than welcome to play around with any of these options here. But this recommended charts will give you not only a preview, but it also lets you move the data around a little bit. So here you can select how you want the information to display. So if you want a pie chart, if you want a bar graph, if you want an XY scatter plot, whatever you want, you can select it here. For the, for the sake of this report, we're going to do a combo graph. Okay. And here you can see that there is a preview of what the chart is going to look like. And here it's going to allow you to make those additional changes. So we want to know the duration and the count of the rule, which are our values here at the bottom. Okay, so how do we want the duration to display? The duration, my personal preference, I would want the duration to show as a line graph overlapping a column or a clustered column. So we'll do the count of the rule as a clustered column and we'll leave the duration as a line. Okay. Now this is going to ask you, what do you want as your secondary axis? So what do you want to display on the right-hand side of the chart? And what I want to display on the right-hand side of the chart is going to be the duration. So I want the duration to overlap the clustered column. Okay. So now that we have the information the way that we want it, we'll click OK. We're going to get this awesome graph here. As you can see, just to confirm that the data is correct, we'll see Brian's vehicle was speeding. So Brian's vehicle here was speeding for the duration of three minutes. So it's right above the two minute mark right there. And it was speeding five times. So the count is here on the left and right, and it's right between four and six, which is number five. So the data is correct. So now we know Brian's vehicle was speeding five times for a total of three minutes. Um, same goes for all of the other vehicles. Um, Ishii's vehicle was speeding and it was um, accelerating hard. So we see Ishii's vehicle here. 
speeding and heart acceleration with a count as the blue and the duration as the darker blue. Now you can take this a little bit further and you can edit the way that this looks um, by removing any field buttons. So these gray buttons, you can remove them and then re-add them to show differently. If you click on the bar graph and you click on the analyze button at the top, there's an additional section here that says field buttons. Click that and then click hide all. It's gonna remove those buttons. You can re-add them by clicking, either clicking back here and just, you know, un unclicking hide all, or you can go into the design button. You can click add chart element on the left-hand side. Here it's gonna give you all of the different options. Okay, so you can re you can name all of your axes. For this one, we're just gonna add a title. So we're gonna name this chart rule broken. Again, you can name it whatever you'd like. So, so now, that the, now that the information is displayed a lot cleaner, we can add our company logo. And we can do that by clicking insert at the top. We're gonna insert picture. So just make sure that you have your company logo saved on your computer as a picture. So we'll use GeoTab. We'll insert that here. Make it bigger, smaller. All right. Now that the changes have all been made, we can save this. We'll do file. Save. Just make sure to save it under the summary tab. When you save it under the summary tab um, and there is a bar graph, you can save this under the dashboard and the bar graph is going to display for quick access. So just make sure to save it under the summary tab if you do have a chart on there. Go ahead and bring that down. Again, we'll re-import it. So we'll go to administration, reports, report views. We'll click add Excel file at the top. We'll drop our file. Okay, and we'll insert the exceptions report that we just edited. We'll change the name. Rules broken chart. Again, we'll turn on that report view because we do want this to show in our drop-down menu. We'll tell the system what rules to read. So just because we did speeding and hard acceleration on the template does not mean that those are going to transfer over. We need to tell the system what rules to read. So we'll click on the exception rules, we'll click hard acceleration, we'll also do speeding. And because there's a chart in that report, we're gonna set this up as a dashboard. So turn on the graphic options. Here you can select who you want to see this report. So do you want your whole company to see it? Do you want a certain group to see it? Do you only wanna see it? So you can select either all in your company, you can select just a group, or you can select include me as a dashboard viewer and only one user is gonna see this graphic, which is gonna be you. Here you can select the date range that you want for this report. So let's do this week. It's gonna ask you, how often do you want this to refresh? So we'll want this to refresh weekly. For next run, it's gonna ask us, when do you want this to update next? You can select either on Mondays or Tuesdays or whatever day you want. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this for now. And here's belonging to. This is asking you what information or what vehicles should this report include. So here you can select all of your vehicles or you can select certain groups. So for this one, we'll just leave it as everything. 
we're going to run this report by the device. And again, you do have to enable those rules. Otherwise, it's going to give you all of the rules, and then your chart is just going to have a lot of information. So we'll do the speeding and the hard acceleration in no particular order. If you need to set this up as an email report, you would do that here by clicking email. And again, it's going to be the same kind of configuration as the dashboard. Just make sure to enable those exception rules at the bottom. So anything that you do on either the report view or the dashboard view or the email report, just make sure it matches across the board. Otherwise, you're going to receive different information on all three options. Okay. For this one, we're not going to email it, so we'll just turn this back off. And then we'll save it. All right. So again, you will be able to find this report in your report views on your list. It's going to be here. Rules broken chart. We'll click on dashboard. That report should be or is available here. And you'll see that that bar graph is now displaying for quick access. So if you need to just click on it, you can do so, and it'll download that information for the date period that you selected under the report configuration. And because we also turned on that report drop-down option, you'll find that under rules and groups, exceptions, you can select your vehicles here, you can select the rules that you want to see, so it's not only limited to speeding and harsh acceleration. Let's say you want to do harsh braking and speeding over 70. You can apply the changes here. Click the View button, click Details, and that template that we created will also be available here. So we'll click Rules Broken Chart. And the information will now show differently. So whatever information you want to see, just make sure to edit that. Um, it should be available for you. So that pretty much wraps it up for me today. Um, it does have that company logo here. So just make sure to input that there if that's something that you'd like. Uh, great, Cindy. Thank you so much. So we have uh, a little bit of time left here today. Uh, we are going to use that to answer some questions. Cindy, I don't know if you've you've had any experience in this. Have you ever tried doing any uh, custom reporting using Google Sheets instead of Excel? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have tried using the Google Sheets. Sometimes there are options that are not available in the Google Sheets that are available in the Excel program. Now we do have to remember that we have to keep this to the template. Now our templates do offer data on the back end that will not transfer through Google Sheets as well. So we don't recommend it because if you do upload a report from Google Sheets or download the template from Google Sheets, uh, once you re-upload it, the data is not going to change due to the fact that the data comes directly from the GeoTab internal system. And I can show you what that looks like. Um, let me just run this really quickly for you here. I'll download the, the template that we created for the rules broken chart. Click export. The data is directly coming through a hidden sheet. So if you click on the report tab and click unhide. There's a data sheet here on the on the back end. So you click that. This is directly coming from the GeoTab server. So this information does not translate to the Google Sheets. Uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. But I mean, if it's something that's gonna never change, you can do it through Google Sheets, download it, and then re-upload it. But I don't think it's something that would be very useful. So I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I've I've had uh, I've had mixed results using Google Sheets. 
in my own personal experience, if it's something simple, you can usually get away with it. But when you get into complicated things, formulas, pivot tables especially, I'd recommend staying with Excel. Another question we had here, when you were working with the exceptions report in Excel, it showed vehicles uh, or devices. Is there a way that you can run these reports for drivers uh, if you have you know different drivers and different vehicles every day? Yeah, absolutely. So when you're working with the exceptions, report you can move you can change this instead of showing the device you can unclick the device field on the right hand side and you can run it by driver so once you add a new field it's not it's going to change the formatting on it and you can change it however you, do, you can change it back to the way that it was so when you add it back as you can see the driver is going to be here at the bottom you can move this up and now it's going to show the driver and then the rule that was broken. So the data is going to con it's going to change depending on how you want to run it. Just make sure to enable it here. So you can either add both of them. You can run device and driver or you can just do driver. Great, thanks. There was also a brief moment in the, uh, again, when you were working with the exceptions report in Excel, it had hard acceleration listed, but it had a duration of zero minutes and zero seconds. So why, why would that happen? Yeah, so really great question. We, like I said, we got asked that a lot. Um, the first edit that I made with the TRIPS history report was changing the cells to show hours, minutes, and seconds. Same, it's the same concept for the exceptions report. And we can edit that. So the duration, as you can see, it's showing zero, one. It doesn't mean that it's one second. It means that it's zero hours and one minute. So again, we would highlight L, click the drop down, click more number formats. We can hit custom we'll find hours, minutes, and seconds. So now we see that the speeding rule was broken for one minute and three seconds, and the ones that were showing zero, it's because they were not broken for one whole minute, so they were broken for 27 seconds. Um, once you make the edits here in the report tab, if you needed to show in the summary tab, uh, you can click right click and click refresh. Sometimes this does not refresh, and if it doesn't, you can click on the value here at the bottom. So click on the drop down here, click value field settings, and it's now going to give you the number format option here at the bottom. And here you would also need to customize it to show hours, minutes, seconds. You click OK, and now it's going to show the duration with that format. So you can see, even after we edited that, uh, the hard acceleration here, it, it is also still showing zero minutes and zero seconds. This is an instantaneous rule. So if it was, you know, broken for a very, very, very short period of time, it's going to show for this length. Just make sure that uh, you edit that to, you know, get the most amount of information. So just hours, minutes, seconds. Unfortunately, it, for some reason, it is set up that way, but you can edit it and it'll show however you'd like. So if there was uh, one thing that really comes in handy in Excel, basically if there's you know one thing that, that you absolutely you know would, would recommend know how to do this in, in Excel, uh, what would that be? I would definitely suggest uh, the pivot tables. Uh, with the pivot tables, they can get a little bit tricky and there are just a little bit more complicated. Um, so I would definitely familiarize myself with the values and how you want these values to show, um, as well as filtering the data. So, uh, you know, filtering this to show only certain vehicles, uh, that is something that, that, I, that I would definitely suggest. Uh, larger fleets, do have certain data that they need to see. So just learning how to filter out what you don't need and what you do need, I think is the most helpful tool in Excel for Geotab.
And and of course, there's um, many resources available uh, online. Uh, there's there's many websites out there that have lots of wonderful information on Excel. Many of them provide it for free. So even if you're a novice, uh, which uh, I don't know about you, Cindy, when I started working here, I could uh, add, subtract, multiply, and divide in Excel, and, and that's it. And you just learn it by doing, and you learn it through the repetition. Great. So that is going to wrap things up here today. Cindy, I want to thank you so much again for joining us on Wildcard Wednesday. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's my pleasure to help you guys out. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in product support. You can ask for me directly. I am there pretty much 24-7. Uh, but yeah, just let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you manage your fleet better. Absolutely. To all of you in attendance, once again, thank you so much for attending today. We appreciate you taking time out of your day. Please reach out to us, as Cindy said, if uh, uh, there's anything that we can assist you with. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and a great week.